Japan has lost control of their yield curve and have lost control of their currency. They are starting to experience rapid depreciation in the value of their currency, given the fact that they are trying to implement a doomed on arrival plan called yield curve control. We are going to dive into exactly what is going on in Japan. Ready? Let's dive in. Real quick, today's sponsor is Swan Bitcoin. Buy when there's blood in the streets. You wanna be dollar cost averaging on the way down, not on the way up. That means you are accumulating more of the asset with the same number of dollars you are putting in. And Swan Bitcoin is the easiest way to do that. They're the easiest, cheapest, and safest way to do that because you can also auto withdraw your Bitcoin to a wallet of your choice. And if you sign up for Swan Bitcoin with my link in the description below, you will get $10 worth of Bitcoin for free just for signing up. Up. People around the world are starting to lose faith in things like modern monetary theory as the places that have been held up as the image of perfection, like Japan being able to print money infinitely and yield curve control have been able to happen with apparently no consequences. That is not the case because the chickens will always come home to roost. Take a look at this. The Japan Bank of Japan is starting to crack as the yen tumbles with stocks and bonds. So what exactly is going on here? Well, number one, very briefly, the Japanese 10 year bond yield exceeded 0.25% for the first time in years. And for the first time since they've been trying to keep it underneath that interest rate. Now, since then it has fallen back down underneath that band. But as a result of that, their currency is collapsing. Take a look at this chart. This is the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. So this is a reverse image of the fall of the yen versus the dollar. You are getting a higher and higher value of the dollar compared to the Japanese yen here. Again, that's another way of saying that the Japanese yen is falling versus the dollar and versus many other things as well. So exactly what is going on here? Well, Japan wanted their 10 year bond yield to be under 0.25%. That means that if regular market participants don't want to buy enough of that debt and they start to sell that debt, it'll push up the interest rate because interest rates and prices for bonds are inversely correlated. Because if I borrow $100 from you and I owe you 1%, that means I have to give you $101 back. If you sell that debt to somebody else for let's say $90, well, how much do I owe that person? I still owe them $101, but they bought that debt for 90 bucks. That means their interest rate that they get is not 1%, they get 11%, right? And so when you have a bond that sells for more or sells for less because the buying and selling pressure will change the price of that bond, that means the yield is going to change because the total dollar amount that's being paid out at maturity, the principal plus interest is going to be the same. So whatever the price of the bond sells for will determine what the yield is. So Japan has wanted their 10 year bond yield to be 0.25% or less has wanted it to stay within that range. Well, investors didn't want to own that debt. So investors have been selling that debt like crazy. Well, what do you have to do then? If everybody is selling it, you want to keep that interest rate low at 0.25%. You as the central bank have to be the buyer. Well, what if you buy a lot of it and it's not enough and it's still butting up against that 0.25%? You just have to continue to print more and more and more money and buy as much as possible of it. Well, this is similar to something like price controls, where when you have price controls set on something, all it means is that the price that's available now because of the legal mandate is different than what the real value is. So investors are looking at that and saying, hey, if the Bank of Japan stepped out of this, the price of this bond would plummet, the interest rate would spike. So since they're buying it, it's like they're buying it at a premium. So I'm gonna sell as much of it as I can because I'm selling it for more than it's it's worth. I'm getting more money for it than what it's actually worth. So it actually provides an incentive to free market participants to get rid of it. Just as if Apple was to say, hey, we'll buy all old iPhones for $2,000 because we want the price of old iPhones to be $2,000. Well, 
everybody would sell their old used iPhones to Apple for $2,000. And suddenly that would be the price would be 2000, but you're selling it for more than what you know it's worth. So it provides an incentive. And so that's what's going on here. The Bank of Japan has had to continue to print more and more and more and more yen in order to support the price of the 10 year bond, which keeps that yield low. That's why the United States dollar versus the Japanese yen has been skyrocketing. That's why the yen has been collapsing because the value goes down as they have to print more and more and more of it to keep up the scheme that will ultimately end in failure. And they haven't failed up until recently to keep it below that band. And even that breakout above 0.25%, they've since fallen back down below and got control over it. But the yen is still collapsing here. We are seeing the yen fall faster and faster and faster. Now, as a side note, this is one of the things contributing to the higher interest rates in United States treasuries as well. If we take a look at the United States treasuries, the two year treasury has been going up very quickly. The 10 year, the 20 year and the 30 year have all been experiencing rises in their interest rates, in their yields. And that is because historically Japan is where a lot of US government debt went. Japan was one of the biggest buyers and is one of the biggest holders of United States treasury debt. They can no longer be doing that and they're no longer buyers right now because they're just busy trying to keep up the value of their own bonds. And so any money that they print in order to buy US bonds means that they're pushing down the value of their yen even faster. All they're trying to do right now is manage this teeter totter between value of the yen and the value of their bonds, which ultimately is destined for failure, but they do not care about US treasuries right now. They are not buying US treasuries. And so that is one of the big reasons why we're seeing such a quick rise in interest rates on US treasuries, because one of the biggest historical buyers is just not buying right now. And they may even be selling, actively selling US treasuries right now in order to try and support their own efforts. Again, ultimately doomed for failure, but we will see how long this will last. At the end of the day, this shows that you cannot violate the laws of economics and the laws of money forever without experiencing the consequences. And ultimately the printing of money is all about the control and the direction of resources. And so when you try and print money and try and artificially impose what the prices of things should be, whether it is debt or whether it is equity or whether it is resources and commodities, ultimately it is doomed for failure because you are going to cause a misallocation of resources, malinvestment, and it's going to result in wealth destruction that will cause your whole scheme to unravel before everybody's eyes. It has happened literally every single time throughout history, and it will always continue to happen time and time again, every time central planners think that they are smarter than reality. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.